I am a big fan of jazz and improvisation, so I like to let the materials or the objects lead me. Once that process begins, I'm able to make connections. The first iron that I worked with had nothing to do with my great-grandmother. It was just an iron that looked like an African mask. Of course, I saw the African mask, so I brought that to it based on my own filters of my life at that time. The objects begin to talk to you after a while. And before you know it, you can relate in many ways. Willie Cole has been working with the motif of the iron, the steam iron, the ironing board, all the paraphernalia of ironing for over 30 years now. It has a presence in his life that goes back even further than that because when he was a child growing up in Newark, his grandmother and his great-grandmother were both housekeepers and they frequently asked him to fix their steam irons. The famous diagram of the Brooks slave ship that was published in the late 18th century has become something that he has directly connected to the shape of the ironing board and therefore connecting the whole world of domestic labor with the long history of enslavement in America and otherwise, thinking about power, thinking about hierarchies, thinking about danger and suffering as well. All of these things run through the iron for him. For one series of prints, Willie Cole used metal ironing boards to create life-size images. He calls them the beauties. At the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study at Harvard, 24 of them were brought together for a rare exhibition. Yeah. And so, when did you decide to actually name them? Uh, well, after, after making them, and I recall that my whole inspiration for the work around steam irons and iron boards came from my great-grandmother, who was a domestic. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed that they should all be named because they, most of the women have passed on. Yeah. And it's kind of like a memorial. The history of the woman, the clothes that the, that the iron board has uh, serviced, you know, is all in the board itself. Mm -hmm. So this is my aunt, this is my father's sister, Dot. Pernia, Carolina, Clara Esther, Dot, Emma, Eva May, Fanny During an May, opening May, day public Jane, discussion, May, Jennifer Fanny and May, Willie talked Willie, more about Lucy, naming Isabel, the beauties. Mammy, Maddie Lee, Pearl, Queen, Rose, Ruth, Sapphire, Sarah, Savannah, Willie May, and Zeddy. Can you uh, talk us through the naming of these prints, what these names mean to you, and why you felt that they should be attached to these prints? Yes, upon viewing these boards, you know, when you look at a work of art, it, it talks to you a lot. You don't want to think you know everything when you're making a work of art. So the boards told me what they were about. And one thing that stood out in our conversation was that they were about women who have labored, women who have suffered, women in my family. <laughs> In my lifetime, I have experienced five or six generations. I knew my great-grandmother and my great-great-grandmother, and of course, all their friends. So the names come from that, that group of women. Cole Rogers of the High Point Center for Printmaking in Minneapolis was the master printer and Willie's lead collaborator on the beauties. They started with vintage ironing boards, each different, then flattened them so they could be run through the giant presses. A whole range of things were used, uh, sledgehammers, hammers, bricks. The initial idea of running a car over it didn't work at all. The rubber tires did, had no effect whatsoever. Uh, at some point, uh, Willie stood on a couple of the boards and we pulled him around the parking lot to, to add more marks to it, continuously adding pressure as it got thinner and thinner until it was thin enough to actually print from. The ironing board is something that's connected in a very direct way to the human body. It's a shape that stands in for a human body while someone's ironing something. And so they feel like bodies in the room with you. This is my great-great-grandmother, Grandma Queen. And it's great to see that this is the board that has the crosses on it because she was yeah. very religious. And that wasn't deliberate, it just happened that way.
Willie Cole describes himself as a perceptual engineer whose job is to change the way we see things. He's mined the visual layers of everything from gas hoses to high-heeled shoes. It's surrealism, it's, it's transformation. Everything is rich. Even the lowly plastic water bottle. The first step for me had to do with the bottle as a vessel that contains a fluid that is essential for our lives. But that fluid is contained in a vessel that could kill us. So it's the, just the juxtaposition of plastic and water is what really caught my attention initially. I think of the bottle as a vehicle, and you're pouring life into your body, and you're breathing your air into the bottle. So now your spirit is in a bottle. So it's like a spirit trap. <laughs> So that's, that's how it started. For Willie, working with water bottles has led to working with communities. At the Pingree School in New Jersey, he worked with students. It was a huge event because we had to collect thousands and thousands of bottles to make this happen. So the whole community was involved in this process. You can put them inside the leg here. I did some drawings to tell them how to uh, prepare the bottles for the sculpture project. When I got there, they already had the bottles. They collected like maybe 20,000 bottles. They had pierced holes on both ends of the bottles. So I showed up with, with this super long 12-gauge uh, wire, and we thread the bottles onto wire. And we made a 25-foot tall giant. After spending some time at the Pingree School, the giant took a trip to New York City for the 2019 Car-Free Earth Day celebration. The recycling part just kind of fell onto it naturally, but most of my work is that way. You know, I'd like to be open as opposed to be a dictator of materials and concepts. So I let things come to me. So after my initial attraction for the spirit that you leave in the bottle and the light that the water that the bottle leaves in you, I had an awareness of the environment and then expanded the whole thing to a bigger audience. And that's something that he's very good at, is finding a single motif that allows us to connect to everything in our culture and to rethink it through that motif. So everything is everything. Is everything. everything is the same thing. You know, we, we live in a world we think that difference is present but sameness is present too.